explosion. And the word spread that what would hit the airwaves on the morning of November 10th, 1969, would be unlike anything that had ever been seen on television. And before it went on the air, there were some pre-reviews. I, I, I mean, I knew a day or two in advance that the reviews were good, but I could not have understood what a smash it would be and what that would then mean, and what, what that feels like in terms of the swoosh of press interest, the swoosh of public acclaim, the, the phone ringing off the wall with every toy maker in the world, with people wanting to buy Sesame Street, I mean, commercial people. Literally. Literally. And it was, really was an overnight. It was an overnight success, no question. Let's hear you sing the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, C, C, D, E, F. Over half of America's 12 million preschoolers saw the show during its first six-month run. It was clear that Sesame Street was the in-show for the very young. But for how long? I'm leaving. I love you. I love you, too. Okay. Sally, you've never seen a street like Sesame Street. Everything happens here. You're going to love it. Back in 1969, no one could have imagined how long this love affair would last. Biography close-up with Harry Smith. Sesame Street will continue in a moment on A&E. Sesame Street. Tax, $60. Platter, $40. Tuxedo, $400. Losing yourself in a movie? Priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Except that at a theater near you. At the midnight, we don't let it all hang down. Just one tiny Claritin relieves seasonal allergy symptoms for 24 hours without making you sleepy. So if you took one in the morning, after midnight, you'd still have hours and hours of relief coming. Claritin has a low occurrence of side effects, such as headache, drowsiness, fatigue, and dry mouth, similar to sugar pill. Talk to your doctor about Claritin soon, during regular office hours. I'm proud of you. Why? You're drinking Florida orange juice. You know the March of Dimes states that the B vitamin folic acid found naturally in Florida orange juice may reduce the risk of some birth defects by as much as 70%. Wow. How do you know this? Email. Email. In the fridge. Oh, yes. I've got this icebox wired. T1, 600 megs RAM, fiber Honey. optic. 100% pure Florida orange juice. Squeeze more health into life. While Mike was putting up his own for sale sign, someone was helping his neighbors, John and Diane, with plans to sell their home. As Mike spent Saturday figuring out legal agreements and guessing his home's value, someone was preparing a counteroffer so John could help at the school fundraiser. And while Mike and his wife were reevaluating their asking price for the third time, someone was closing the sale on John and Diane's home. You've got a life. We let you live it. We're realtors. Real estate is our life. Tomorrow on Biography, when she was a child, she was known for her figure eights. I really loved skating. It was definitely the first love of my life. When she got older, it was figure eights, tens, and twelves. I shipped all that skating energy to fashion. Vera Wang, as Superstar Designers Week begins tomorrow on A&E. Sesame Street. like to draw or paint or maybe just sketch and doodle well if you do chances are you have the interest needed to become a serious art student to find out simply call toll free and art instruction schools will send you this enjoyable art test there's no cost or obligation take the test at home in your spare time and mail it to us when you're done our experts will review and grade your test call our toll free number today for your free art test don't let the wonderful world of art pass you by. To get your free art test without cost or obligation, call this toll-free number, 
Don't delay. Call this toll-free number now. Call 1-800-445-3883. That's 1-800-445-3883. Biography Close-Up with Harry Smith, Sesame Street, continues on A&E. Now, I'm going to sing you a little song and tell you about some of the people around our neighborhood, okay? Do you have a choice? No, you really don't. Now, listen carefully. Now, who are the people in your neighborhood? In your neighborhood, in your neighborhood, say we are the people in your neighborhood, in your neighborhood, in your neighborhood. Oh, we are the people in your neighborhood. If you're lucky, you could live next door to us. People that you meet each day. Next. Anything else? Recognize them. They have virtually lived in our homes for the past three decades. Oh. Hello. Hey, why don't you tell everybody what, uh, I'll tell them what frogs like to eat, okay? Fried chicken and pizza. How long have you known me? <laughs> Too long, Oscar. Mm-hmm. Bob. Bob McGrath. Well, there's no mistaking him. He moved in when Sesame Street was built and remembers those early days fondly. Hi, welcome to Sesame Street. Hey, you know, we've all been waiting just for you. We were all giddy with the fact, I think, that we were really on to something terrific. And it was tremendously exciting for all of us. Yeah. Hello. La, 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 la. Yeah. Did you get it? You didn't? Well, keep watching. You will. Susan, Dr. Loretta Long. Yes, she has a Ph.D. in education, has been with the show since it debuted. She hoped to join the Motown stable of soul singers. Neither she nor her family ever expected that she'd wind up here. I'm from Paw Paw, Michigan, and I didn't even live in town because I grew up on a farm, so I'm really a hit. But anyway, I'm the first college graduate in my family, on both sides of the family. So you can imagine when I call my mom and dad all excited that I was quitting the school system to go be on this show. And the more I talked, the quieter I got. And when I got the part about this eight-foot yellow bird. Hey, hey, can I speak to you a second? This is exciting. My mother stopped breathing. I said, Mom, are you still there? I couldn't even hear. She said, talk to your father. They kept pushing the phone back and forth. And finally, Daddy said, you're going to do this on the weekends, all right? After you come home from your real job, right? Um, I'll give you a hint. My name begins with this letter. Does? Yeah. And my name is... Maria. Maria. Yeah. Maria. Sonia Manzano joined Sesame Street in its third season. Loretta was the first person that I saw in Sesame Street. I was at uh, college and I walked into the student union and, well, first I saw James Earl Jones, very bald, very young, reciting the alphabet. A, B, C, C. D. I said, what is this? This was, <laughs> this was so wild. I, with the letters flashing over his head. I. It was so amazing. I was just riveted to the set. And then next shot was the street. And there you were in front of the stoop. And I was just, my mind was blown. I said, but that's my street. That's my stoop. I never saw my neighborhood on television before. And this, you never saw people of color on television. This show set on an inner city street was cast with characters who actually might live there black white and hispanic at a time when color television was coming into vogue those you saw on it were virtually all white but not on sesame street hello what is your problem well what was that some guy said some awful things about me and Gina. What did he say? Tully, there's just some really stupid people in the world who can't stand to see it when people of different races are friends. It was a very idealistic time, and people, we were going to change the world, what and is? we were going to do it with the television mm -hmm. show. Just look at our block on Sesame Street. There, there, there are brown people, there are pink people, not to mention every other color, right? There, there, there are monsters, there are penguins, there are grouches. And an eight-foot-tall yellow bird who's what? friends with everyone. What? I wonder what that jerk thinks about that. I don't care what color anybody is. Hey, you're awful. 
<laughs> no one on Sesame Street cared that Oscar was orange before he decided that green was really his color. See? You're crummy. Oh, come on now, Oscar. It was always clear that the Muppets were the stars of Sesame Street, but the actors came to accept the role they played and realized just how important it was. I have to say, it was hard in the beginning. The tendency for an actor is to, is to compete with the Muppet because you feel, you don't know what you're doing there. You kind of feel lost. But then when when it dawns on you that oh, I'm the straight man. Why? You're yucky. 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 And Z. Yeah, let's hear it for the ending. You're a zero. <laughs> Once you understand that, then you're home free and you can have a great time. The actors also saw that they had a huge responsibility on Sesame Street to teach the Muppets and through them, the viewers at home. Okay, we, we all live on the earth. The Muppets are the surrogate children, so we use them, obviously, to ask all of the questions that we think a child might ask in an exaggerated way. Certainly Big Bird, if he asked the same question five times, you know there's right. four million kids that needed that same question right. asked five times. No. There's a baby growing inside your body right now? Pretty amazing, huh? Where? Right here, Big Bird. Sesame Street has always answered the real-life questions of children. Gee, well, when can I see it? When will the baby come out? And let children see real life unfold before their eyes. I think a reason that people keep watching the show after so many years is that the cast members have been allowed to age with the show, and our life has changed from the beginning so we're not we weren't hired to play like this one part and remain the same because people in real life really do change so when i came on i played a teenager and then uh, when feminism was in the news i got a job as a construction worker and then finally when i fell in love got married and had a baby maria did as well Maria's wedding was just another moment in the life of Sesame Street that we'll never forget. There are so many of them, like snapshots in a treasured photo album. Don't drop the ring, Bob. For us, Maria, Bob, and Susan aren't just characters on a TV show, but members of the family. I now pronounce you Husband and wife. Yay! I think that they really <laughs> feel like they just know me. Mm -hmm. It is not sort of like, like you're a movie star or you're a television right. star, mm -hmm. but I had an experience where a child, oh, somebody I went to college with says to a neighbor's child, oh, you see that Maria on Sesame Street? I know her. And the kid said, so, I know her too. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, it's very right. uh, personal. It is. It is. Big Bird, now you go right there, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Everyone knows them and knows where they live. No. Now go forward. You ready? Right. And in a way, it's the kind of place we'd all like to live. Get your left arm. The neighbors are great, and the neighborhood, well, nothing beats it. Now, shake your head. Sunny day, day sweeping now. Clouds away, I'm on my way to where the air is sweet. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? Look, kids said, uh, you don't know, you don't know how to get there <laughs> yet. Yeah. Yeah. Biography Close-Up with Harry Smith will continue. But first, Biofeedback asks, who is your favorite Sesame Street character? Visit biography.com and tell us what you think. Hydraulics? Got it. Black controls? Got it. Peanut Reason? Ain't got that. How could he? Peanut Reason are new. Really peanutty and lots of milk chocolate. Peanut Reason, you gotta try them. Got it. Lucky Termites. Think this is a free lunch? It's not. Call 1-800-Terminex. 
for our termite baiting program with a lifetime protection plan. Termites, enjoy your last meal. For a free inspection, call 1-800-TERMINATES. All right, boys, last card. I'm gonna raise your dollar. You must have some, boys. Just a buck. Hey, don't you know about 10 10 220? What? Yeah, man, 10 10 220. All calls up to 20 minutes. 99 cents. I'm just 7 cents a minute after that. All calls up to 20 minutes for only 99 cents? See, a buck is worth a lot. I'm out. Me too. I call you. Do you have any fives? Go fish. <laughs> Dial 10 10 220. Campbell's was good. You just didn't know how good tomatoes could be. Recent studies have shown that diets rich in tomato products are associated with the reduced risk of certain types of cancer. And all eight Campbell's tomato soups are full of tomato goodness. There's enough Campbell's here to last me a hundred years. That's the whole idea. Campbell's. Mm-mm good. Want a quick snack? Try Campbell's ready-to-serve tomato soup in the resealable container. Because you won. Because the road is unpredictable because laughter is contagious. From cover to cover, Biography Magazine reveals why every life has a story. In the March issue, Katie Couric, plus a look at Oscar-winning actresses, profiles of Robert Redford, the Wright brothers, and more. Biography Magazine, every life has a story. On sale now at your local newsstand. from Agilent, communications can grow up to be whatever it wants to be. Let's see what this baby can do. Biography Close-Up with Harry Smith, Sesame Street, continues on a and I have to say, I feel like I've been knowing you for a long time. <laughs> well, I've been around, but I've not seen very much. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Carol Spinney. Though he's been a regular on Sesame Street since it began, him you probably don't recognize. Now you do. Who is Big Bird? Oh, he's a, uh, a, a six-year-old who ho hopes to be liked. Yeah. Typical kid. He's not stupid, but uh, we don't even use that word on the show. Uh, but he is uh, just a little slower than the kids are watching, which I think helps them urge him along. Oh, dear. I don't see how I'm going to teach big and little. Do you have any ideas? Mm. I have ideas. What? I think the little Yuppie bear. Oh, hey, that's a good idea. All right. How old was Big Bird when the show started? Well, he was just a goofy guy, so he hadn't, uh, uh, till I decided he should be a kid. And then he, since he didn't know his alphabet or anything, I said, well, why don't we make him four and a half? Right. And then, uh, Gradually, he could read so well, I said, well, he's got to be six. At Cadet E. Jekyll and not for stewances, if I ever find out just what this word can mean, I'll be the smartest word the world has ever seen. So now he's up to six. Yeah. So s he went to four and a half to six in 30 years. Yes. Because in actuality, he'd be, uh, he'd be putting it for retirement, I think. Oh, hi, Gordon. Big Bird. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing that? Oh, because. Because why? Just because. Did you anticipate doing it for five years, ten years, yeah. 25 years, 30-some years? Well, I don't know if I would have thought that long, but I, I, I used to even say I'd move on to something greater. You know what I'm going to do now? What? This. Dee-doo, dee-doo. Then I thought... I wouldn't leave this for anything. Uh, I really, uh, 
uh, can't imagine that. Now, of course, I'm, I, I would like to keep doing it until I can't hold that bird's head up. Mm. Here we go, everybody, in five, four, three. No, Big Bird has no plans to ever leave his home on Sesame Street. Oh, no. I wonder if my nest is a mess. Unless, of course, that home is threatened, or maybe even destroyed. All right, um, I need a synopsis for this show. All right, this is um, Big Bird uh, notices that his nest has been destroyed by the hurricane. Okay. Big Bird. Yes, discovered. Big Bird's nest will be destroyed. But here they're trying to make sure that this show doesn't scare kids and allows them to handle what will certainly be a heart-wrenching moment. Wow, that was some strong wind last night. Gee, <gasps> what about my nest? This is where I have some suggestions about some dialogue changes because Big Bird is devastated. I mean, he just lost his home. So Rosemary Trulio, Sesame Street's director of research, meets with head writer Lou Berger and with Judy Freudberg, who wrote this script. It's Rose Marie's job to see that the program teaches and gently deals with a sensitive subject, while Lou and Judy want to make sure their script remains poignant and entertaining. Could he just recognize that, you know, Big Bird is upset and sad, so can he say, you know, you're right, Big Bird, I know you're very upset. Uh, I just want to validate... You're right, Big Bird, it's not all right. I know you're very upset, but it will be all right. It's a little Something wordy. Like that, but the whole point of these shows is that we're, we're validating how Big Bird feels. It's a matter of give and take. That's how it's been done since the beginning. Within months of Sesame Street's debut, researchers found that preschoolers who watched the show were learning. At the time, the show's goals were to teach kids the letters of the alphabet and to count up to 10. Today, Sesame Street aims much higher. Every scene of every script has to address a specific educational goal. This year, one of the things they're trying to teach is the notion of empathy. When he is talking with Big Bird, can he put yes, his arm let's put around? His, I was going to just say, try okay. to comfort. It's all right, Big. No, it's not. Gordon, putting his arm around Big Bird. You're right, Big Bird. You're right, Big Bird. It, it, it's not all right, but it will be all right. Oh. But it will be all right. Okay. It's much better to show okay, it than to then let's it. do that. After going through the script page by page, all of Rosemarie's concerns are addressed. The script is approved. But there still could be changes. As they've done since Sesame Street went on the air, this show will be tested to see how it plays with preschoolers. All right, we're all ready, so we're just going to have a good time and watch Sesame Street, okay? Yeah. If they have any problems, if they don't understand things, or if they get upset, there could be revisions. One show was even canceled. And we try to do a show about divorce. Um, because it's a real thing and it takes place in a real world and there are kids who, who are dealing with it and we um, actually uh, researched and wrote and and produ and and went into the studio and shot a show about divorce they they then showed it to kids it seemed to in the testing of it to to upset kids and raise questions there are things that we're not going to do because we can't deal with it it would be dishonest you know because we wouldn't be able to we wouldn't be able to explain our to explain it to kids and it would upset them Lou Berger has been writing for Sesame Street for over a decade, but has been a fan since the beginning. I was watching the show with my son when he was very little, and uh, I loved watching it with him. Uh, he got what he got out of the show, and I got what I got out of the show. But I remember watching one, one episode, and I, somebody came running out. It was a Kermit the Frog. It was a Kermit the Frog scene. We take you now to Kermit the Frog with another fast-breaking news story. <clears throat> oh, uh, uh, hi all, this is uh, Kermit the Frog of Sesame Street News, and today I am standing at the base of the tower where the Princess Rapunzel... Kermit comes running out to a princess and says, Excuse me, are you a princess in distress? And the princess said, uh, What do I look like? I'm wearing a pantsuit. And I remember, you know, guffawing and uh, uh, my son looking at it and laughing for other reasons, and I realized this would be the most fun kind of stuff to write for. I wanted to write for this show. 
Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Uh. Hey, Prince, now what, huh? <laughs> From the beginning, Sesame Street has attracted an adult audience. Turns me upside down, something about what? A who's who of singers and actors appeared on the show. But to the kids, they were, who's that? Fly me to the moon. He wants to wriggle amongst the stars. Mom and Dad were fans of the performers, so that brought them to the show. Rubber ducky, you're the one. You make bath time lots of fun. And when parents watched, their kids felt, well, maybe Sesame Street was something very cool. When I squeeze you, you make Whose idea, and when did it start, to put famous people on the show? We did that right away because we uh, wanted to have the parents view and say, well, so-and-so is going to be on. Girl, I got a beautiful feeling in And there are a vast number of adults without children that watch. Adults without kids? Mm hmm Older people who just hate most of television. <laughs> I checked into a hotel in Atlanta in the 70s, and the manager came up with my suitcase, which was odd. It wasn't a bellhop. And he knocked at the door and said, I, here's your suitcase. Are you who I think you are? And I said, you mean Elizabeth Taylor? I mean, I, I joked. And he said, John Genskernay, which is unusual for an adult to recognize the name. And he said, I watch every morning. It is my favorite show on the air. Mm. I wanted you to know that. Mm. Oh, I used to be doing incredible things like, while riding a horse through the path, Lading all the wagons through, or it could be a cane, and you're dancing around. Kids might not get the humor of, say, a Robin Williams. Okay, you ready? Can I? Three, three, help. Okay. Okay. But there's so much on Sesame Street that's there only for them. Yeah, terrific. Well, Sesame Street is a show that speaks directly to the kids. I mean, one, one of the givens on the show is that from the moment the show starts, you know, Big Bird or whoever turns around and says, says, hi, good to see you again. We're having a play date. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. <laughs> Very good. Oh, welcome to Sesame Street. So I think there's a very strong connection with those characters. Um, we bring kids to the studio, and they, they meet the Muppets. <laughs> and it's a very strange experience because you'll see the puppeteer is, is leaning down and, and holding the puppet and forget that guy you know that guy he's got some job i don't know why is he underneath elmo you know hey, it's an elmo. <laughs> all right we'll live with him the kid will live with him but the connection with the puppet is so amazingly strong when elmo says you know give elmo a hug and you see there's a guy down here, you know, saying, you, you know, forget, it's truly, truly, um, you know, very funny and very moving. Elmo, Elmo, thank you very much. Give him a hug again. Give him a hug. Mm -hmm. Say, I love you, Elmo. Love you. Love you, too. Kids don't look at us. They don't know us. They know the character that's on that show. That's their friend. They don't know me. They just look at me as somebody that's holding their friends. Meet puppeteer Kevin Clash. His friend is a Muppet known as Elmo. A furry three-year-old with an unforgettable falsetto. Are people surprised that a uh, six-foot-tall, 190-pound African-American man is Elmo? Well, you know, that has always happened to me in my career. What I get is really wonderful because they're like, oh, cool, cool, wonderful. And, of course, African-American people see me. And they're like, yes great you know i didn't know that elmo was black you know uh, 
Which is, I mean, which is, which is really wonderful. I mean, when, 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 a lot of times when I, when I do, now here's the question. and I, of course, I say he's not black, he's red, and he's three and a half, and he does all that sort But I know what you mean. I, I, you know, I take it, I, you know, I take it as, as a, you know, as a compliment of, of what, you know, what I do, and, uh, and, and what I try to do is I try to encourage not only black children but all children that this is a wonderful occupation. This is 